Hi all. Uh, we're going to continue our ASA lab. We're going to talk about uh, dynamic net and PAT as well as policy net today. So uh, let's get to it. Um, we're using our previous lab that we had in the, in the last few ASA labs. Uh, we're just going to continue on with it. Um, so we'll just go from inside to outside. So inside most secure, outside least secure. And we'll talk about dynamic net first. Um, dynamic net and PAT. So, you know, you use NAT and global commands for this, right? So NAT inside, so this is the, the the interface of the people we want to NAT. So the source of the traffic in our case is going to be PC1 over here. And he's going to be talking to Pub1 and Pub2 out on the internet. So um, again, he's on the inside subnet PC1. So we're NATing inside. Um, an identifier, we'll use one. And um, here you can... Uh, you can put in access lists here, reference access lists. You can put in a host IP. You can put in a subnet. Let's just say, for example, <clears throat> that over here we wanted to net everyone on the inside. Um, again, just so they could get access to the internet. It's a common practice. People do this all the time. So we've got net on the inside interface, identifier one, our entire internal subnet. And then we'll do global outside. So the interface you're going to, um, one is the identifier which matches the net statement and we'll do interface. So this is actually dynamic PAT, right? And you can see it says here that the outside interface has been added to the address pool. So what's going to happen is uh, when people on the inside uh, segment are accessing uh, devices on the internet, they're going to be padded to the interface address of the firewall, which is 100.100.100.1 um, slash a port number so the ASA can keep track of the state of the session and allow the stateful replies back in. Um, so we'll just show you this here. We'll hop over to uh, PC1 that's on the inside. We'll tell net to uh, to uh, pub uh, 1, which is not 10, and port 80. It's open. And when we get into the uh, firewall and do a show xlate, you can see that our internal host, PC1, was netted to the IP address of the firewall. Right, so that's dynamic PAT. Um, we'll just break that connection there. Go back to the firewall. Um, let's do a no global outside. Oops. One interface. Don't show run global. We don't have. Um, <clears throat> what we can do is this. Um, we can do a. So we still have, you see, the NAT command in there, NATing uh, identifier one, everyone on the inside. But we can do a global outside. Um, <clears throat> again, one, the identifier mat to match the, the NAT inside statement. But over here, we can do a pool. So we can do 100, 100, 100, dot 10 through 100, dot 100, dot 100, dot 100. All right? <clears throat> so now, what happens is uh, when we go to PC1 and we do a telnet to 200 to the pub1 device again, 180. You can see we're connected again, <clears throat> but in the firewall we do show xlate. Uh, we've been added to one of the IPs in the pool. Um, right, so this is now it's a dynamic net instead of PAT. So it was PAT when we were just using the interface alone to net everyone on the inside, but now people are going to get their own IP. So th this local host will hold hold this global NAT address for the duration of this connection, and then it'll get released when this connection's uh, finished. I think it's a 30 second timeout by default. So we'll just hold the translation for an extra 30 seconds, and that'll be released, and that IP will be thrown back in the pool. <clears throat> and that pool can vary in size. So you got to be careful. Um, you know, you're going to make sure you have enough IPs to cover all your hosts. Otherwise, you might want to also add a, you know, a global outside one interface, so that after you get, if you have, uh, we have a, we have 90 IPs in our pool because we used, uh, or did we? Yeah, we used 10 through 100, 90 IPs. So say the 91st guy goes, so you still want him to get out, so he would then go over to the that outside one uh, interface statement and start being padded out using the firewall IP. So that's uh, dynamic NAT and dynamic PAT. And we'll just, um, let's clean this up. Let's get rid of this statement here and then we'll move over to a policy NAT. 
what happened? Oh, sorry. I'm copying the wrong command. Um, get rid of this global header. Copy and paste a little faster than typing, right? And we'll do a no on the net. Okay, and um, I guess what I'll do for the dynamic net, um, I'll show you two things at once. Um, so have a look at this. I'm going to do again um, net in inside one, but here we'll, oh sorry, first create an access list. <laughs> it's going to reference an access list for dynamic net. So we'll do access list pub one permit IP host, and you, you can you can get um, a little more specific here, like you can say the protocol and the port number and stuff, but just for the sake of ease, I'm just going to put full IP, um, and we're going to do two of them, so we'll do access list pub two permit IP from host to host Oops. to the pub2 host, right? So I made pub1, you know, 200.10 over here is pub1, pub2 is 211, so uh, we're pointing to 211, and PC1 is on both ACLs. So if we, now we do a net inside one access list, pub1, and we do a global outside uh, one to match the net one statement, and we'll do uh, 100, 100, 100 dot 10. Um, and if we do a net inside two access list pub two, and then we do a global outside two, and we'll do 100, 100, 100 dot 11. All right, so what's supposed to happen now is when PC1 is accessing pub1, he's going to be netted to the 100, 100, 100 100.10 IP address because the access list says, you know, the net statement's pointing to the access list and the access list says it's the, the, the action's happening when this host accesses that host. And then conversely, when pub1 accesses, or sorry, PC1 accesses pub2, uh, he should be netted to the 100, 100, 100.11. So let's try it out and see what happens. So if we tell net to uh, 100, 100, oops, sorry, we're going to pub 200.10, pub 1 on 80. So it's connected. If we do a show x late in here, we can see that, uh, so this is a leftover translation, it should time out. But you can see that currently though, we are our 10, 10, 10, 10 host did use 100, 100, 100.10. Um, you know, when you show con, it's the only connection, right? It's our our internal host is connected to that pub one on 80. And if we come back here and uh, break that, and then we do a telnet to pub two on 80, you can see we're connected. If we do a show x late, now you can see 10, 10, 10, 10, translated to 100, 100, 100, 100 11. And if we do a show con, show connection, the only connection in, in use right now is PC1 connected to pub2 on 80. Right, so that was the policy now. I'll just show you that again. I'll show it to you this way. Right, so we have a, uh, oops, just scroll up a little bit. We have, oh, where do we go? Oh, you see the access list as well. Actually, maybe I'll just make it a touch bigger. So we have access list pub1 permitting PC1 to the pub1 server. We have NAT inside one access list pub1. We have global outside one, the dot 10 on the outside. We have access list pub2 permitting our PC1 to the pub2 address. And we have a NAT inside two access referencing the pub2 ACL. So when that traffic matches pub2, he gets globaled to the matching identifier 2. 11 on the outside. Um, so those are the basics anyway <coughs> of uh, policy net and then dynamic net and pat. Um, you know, there's, a little, there's a little more to it. You can play around with it, check it out, uh, have some fun with it. But if you have any questions for me, leave some comments on YouTube and I'll uh, do my best to get back to you. Thanks a lot.